Good morning everyone, welcome to my channel. So today I just want to revisit my Roxy Creations piece. Now this is the one that's going on the mannequin. So one thing I have done is I've torn myself out a piece of calico that um, is quite large. The top edge fits snugly around her waist, but the skirt does become quite full as you come out. So technically at the bottom corner, it doesn't make the circumference of her skirt. But I, with slow stitch, I can add more fabric in to sort of get me where I need to get. So at the moment, I feel like this is a comfortable size of fabric to work on. And I can just extend and add accordingly when needed. So what I wanna do is firstly, I will measure my piece of calico, my background. So you guys know how big this piece is. It's 84 centimeters or 33 inches. And her skirt, uh, 53 centimeters or 21 inches. Now that is allowing for a little turned over edge that could be stitched to her waistline. And it also allows for the tulle that is on the existing uh, little dress there to hang out the bottom about oh, three inches. So I can put some lace through here and then you'd still see the tulle. So that's, that's a start anyway. So I'm just, I haven't looked at this piece for a um, couple weeks. So I just want to, before I decide to stitch anything down, I just want to revisit it. And one thing I've noticed since I've come back to it is, I don't know if I'm a lover of this piece here. I sort of feel like it could be over there just to spread the pink around. So I'm just going to relocate him for now. And maybe nestle him a little bit in with those flowers because there's no stitchery there. So I'm just sort of, I don't know, still playing. I'm still unsure of where it's heading and we have only had a couple prompts. So I don't know if I want to make too many decisions yet. It's just a case of, you know, just playing with it, look at it. As we make things, add it. The skirt sort of comes around here too. So I need to take that into consideration. Maybe I do need to keep it over here because of the way the skirt, this is sort of under the drapery. But then that could go further around her hip. I just don't know. I just don't know. It's uh, it's tricky because we're sort of feeling our way with the project. Maybe I will go back there. Sort of feel like this could be a bit of dead space up here. Like you just see the monogram. If anything, probably the monogram needs to move over. Maybe this needs to sit on top of that lace. It was a bit tucked away. Yeah, that's probably better actually. Or comes over a little bit to give you a bit of breathing space between her and... Maybe I'll do that. Bring it more this way. Maybe that can then come over. Yeah, that's probably better. Because I do have that drapery of that overhang. Like there's a, a lacy skirt. Then there's the underneath dress. And then there's the tulle poking out the bottom. And I've pulled up that lacy skirt. So it's sort of nestled up here and is draping across. And then it comes around the back. Yeah, that's probably a little bit better. Then maybe this guy can sneak in here. Now the prompt was treasured lace. And I have already placed 
a lot of lace on this, but in the name of the treasured lace, I do have some that I want to add, which is in a tin sitting over near the mannequin. So I could have brought that across. I sort of feel like it could just have more upon more. So just hang. <clears throat> All right, treasured lace. I want to add some lace from my mother's wedding dress. Now, I have shown you this before, but these are the little bits and pieces. So they're like little, little florilettes. So I might just take myself off a little piece. And just add that. Yeah, I like that there. Just a little, little piece of that. I need to start stitching things down. It's tricky. Now, where else can I add a little bit of this special lace? Maybe I'll put a little bit through there as well. I might leave, see there's like a half one there. I might leave that because I can then use that to tuck in underneath maybe somewhere. The more layers, it'll thicken up beautifully. Yeah, I like that. Turn my phone off. I'm pleased I've got my background fabric sorted now because I can actually pick up needle and thread and start stitching all this down. Okay, that's, I think that's enough. It sort of swishes through there. So we'll pop that away. Oops, now it's exploding out of the tin. Let's get that. Okay. Now I found these bits through the week and I thought, oh, they've just got to find a home because they're so delicate. That little piece there, it's such a little treasure. It's so, like, it's worn out, it's torn. And I just felt like it needed to find a home before it was just disintegrated. It's such a, a ratty little piece of lace. But I do love it. So I'm just going to move my piece down and decide where I put that. Do I bring it in? I sort of feel like it softens this whole corner. So there'll be two little treasures going on here. little hole lines up with that little flower or do I bring that right in bring that up a little tighter I suppose these little pieces I can just leave for a moment. I sort of feel like that needs to come off of there. Maybe I can use it. Yeah, I'm going to remove this bit. It's not quite working, but I might be able to bring it in here somewhere. 
just to soften. Yeah, that's that's working for me. They can nestle in around the C from this side. Yeah, I like that. That works. Put a pin through there. I think the the thing with this project this time is don't don't rush it. Just do a lot of pinning, maneuvering because there could be something else you want to work into the piece that you want to give more real estate to than another piece. So don't feel like you need to have everything stitched immediately. I think it's going to be one of those types of projects because the girls are going to come up with something that might send you in a completely different direction. I can pretty much guarantee it. I think it's going to be, you know, just play it by ear. Or if you find that you're heading in another direction, maybe it's a case of um, you start a second one. Okay, let's get a pin in that. I sort of feel like this is out in no man's land. I'm going to take that little bit off as well. And I might just tuck it in to here. Yeah, I like that. It sort of has created a bit of a frame. Around that, I do like that, which makes me think this piece is not right. Maybe, gosh, it, it's so, <laughs> it's so ratty looking. I'm going to add that into there. So there you go. There's this week's prompt, treasured lace. This little piece, uh, this would have come from Grandma's cupboard, and I would say. It's either very well used and has started to disintegrate or it's very old. So I'm just not sure. I like that. I re yeah, I really like that. Now this little bit came off the end. So maybe this can come down into here just to thicken up. So I don't like that corner there. See, there's a little line. So maybe that can go there. It's the start of the, the whoosh. Or do I, is it lost there? Probably is. To me, that's a spot for something, but not probably not yet. Maybe we bring it up onto her skirt. Got a bit of... Don't even mind it there. Don't want to encroach on that skirt too much. There's all that beautiful embroidery. I want to see, see this line of the back of her skirt. I just don't know about that. Something, I feel like something could go there. Maybe I can just tug it in a fraction. I want to break that line up that you can see from the piece of fabric that had the C slash G. Don't know. It just feels a bit lost, doesn't it? I'm not convinced about that placement. So let's just pop him to one side, pop him up here. He's yet to find a home. You just know when it's not right. I'm pretty much happy with all this through here, I think. This is probably a little bit flat, 
but it doesn't mean that something can't come over it or some beads and things like that. So I love this line here. I like the fact that I see the edge of my piece here and I can still tuck in here. So I think, oh, here we go. I think I'm ready to start invisible stitching a few of these elements down. So let's grab a, a needle. We'll put a thimble on because it's dangerous work. I feel like I could do with a bit more pink through this zone. So I'm sure something will come. The other thing is I've got this beautiful piece of French toile. I'm just not sure if I'll actually have... What is that? Something is disintegrated. I've been sorting out beads all morning. They've been getting out of hand and I've got plenty of bead containers, but they just seem to be piling up on the outside of the bead containers. You know, those trays that you often see in my picture. Um, I've bought a few Elizabeth Ward ones from Amazon, but um, they're really expensive. They're close to $100 Australian. And then I found, um, who is it, Craft Online, they're an Australian company that have them for $40. So I've got a few of them now, and but I just haven't had time to actually put the beads in the tray. So that's what I was doing this morning. I just felt like sitting quietly. I was listening to one of Rachel's videos and just sorting beads and it was therapeutic I must say I probably could have cut this lace down too but I don't know I sort of feel like I need this lineal line across the bottom of the piece like a underscore so to speak so I'm going to leave it and just work my way through there I do feel like I need some pink here Maybe I can find a floral fabric that can tuck in around there. Don't know. I guess if there's a prompt favourite fabric, I could probably go rummaging through my French fabrics because there's a lot of tones there that are similar. Or um, beads or oh, something will come, won't it? You could nearly, nearly even mimic these flowers through. I think that's probably what I'll end up doing is bringing some floral element through. And I thought... I might make this piece detachable because if one day I want to do something else to the mannequin, I can take this piece completely off. And this is a collage by itself. So I'm sort of thinking along those lines. I like flexibility with my projects because you just, you just never know. This might end up going into something bigger one day or get broken down into a couple smaller things like... So I'm thinking of somehow making it so it's a piece to go under that little dress, like like i am already told you guys, but then it can be detached. So that's sort of my thinking at the moment. But the thinking can change. <laughs> Doesn't it change regularly? It does. Well, this is really boring for you. So all I'm going to do is just pick a spot and do some invisible stitching. So if there's something else better you want to do, go for it. Or put some headphones in and go and do some vacuuming, guys. I know it's the last thing we, we do. <laughs> Especially when your craft room is calling you. Look at those little beads on there. 
So we really go to town with beads. Might just stay in a lineal line with this invisible stitch and then I'll know that I've got the basics stitched down. Should put some music on. What have I got to say? What have I got to tell? Oh, I know what I can tell you. Um, Mary Ann's husband. Uh, so he's was best mates with my husband, and then um, he found Mary Ann. They got married, and of course, the three girls came along. So there's a lot of history between the two boys because they sort of grew up together. They all played soccer together and then ended up at the same school. And Kev actually set my husband and I up on a blind date. He was with another uh, girl at the time and she was a crazy girl. So he soon broke up with her and then um, Mary Ann came along. So and that was then him settling down. So anyway, long story short, once again, heading off on a tangent, it was his birthday and he was saying to his daughters and his wife, for my 55th birthday next year, I would love to have a costume party. We'll, we'll do something, that, you know, fun. Anyway, the girls are sitting there listening to him think about what he'd like to do. And they then clicked that he's a, he was actually 55 this year. So they said, Dad, you're not 55 next year. You're 55 this year. Well, he was just, he's like, no, I'm not. It's next year. And they're like, no. <laughs> so he didn't realise he was actually a year older than he thought. So we were laughing and laughing. We thought that was just so funny. It was just so typical of Kev. He, uh, yeah, it was just, oh, funny, funny. So we we're saying next time he does that, we won't tell him. And then if every couple of years he does it, by the time he hits 70 for his 70th, we can say to him, you're actually 75, mate. Would be amusing. But, um, yeah, I think he's going to be more aware of it now, <laughs> considering we've been teasing him. So he decided he'd better think of something pretty quick. And they chose Putt-Putt. Is that piece of lace up the right way? I don't think it is, but it actually looks better. This way it looks finer. This side looks really chunky and messy. I can sort of see knots. Yeah, I think this is right. Anyway, I like it this way. Looks looks more delicate. So the plan was we were to go to this place called Victoria Park. It's sort of over near the centre of town in Brisbane. And uh, there's a big golf course there, a driving range and a putt-putt. Now, we haven't played putt-putt. Well, I've never played it. My husband's played it when he was younger, but they, they've just never been around where I grew up. So there was probably, I think there was oh, 12 of us. Uh, Mary Ann's sisters, the odd husband here and there, and a couple nieces, the daughters, a couple boyfriends of the daughters, and myself and Gaz. So first of all, we had dinner at this outdoor bistro area that is um, owned by the big golf course and it's sort of anyone who wants to have a casual meal. So they had a wood-fired oven there doing the pizzas and things like that. But everywhere you sort of looked, you could see huge venues that were having formal functions like there was a wedding there was a graduation from one of the universities or it was a ball or something 
So surrounding us with just, oh, beautiful dresses, fabrics, you know, just glamour. So we had our pizzas and we had about an hour to kill. So it was great. We just sat around and a few entrees, some pizzas, and Kevy shouted, so it was fantastic. So we all ate until we were full, a few ginger beers, and then it was time to head down and uh, register in for our putt-putt. So we're in three teams of four, and everyone was squabbling over who was going to be in whose team, and Marianne was trying to explain to everyone it was irrelevant. You were playing individually against everyone, getting your score as you went. So it really didn't matter whose team you were in. So, but it didn't, they just didn't listen. It was so funny. Everyone was arguing over who was in whose team and we're going to beat you and it was quite competitive. But it didn't matter because it was an individual game. The teams were just about letting four at a time go through so that everyone had time to complete that section of the course. So in the end, Mary Ann said, look, just everyone, you go by the car because we came in three cars, four people per car. She said, look, stop squabbling, you play by car. So it worked out really well because it was my husband and I in one team with um, Mary Ann's sister and her husband. So we had a, what would you say, a mature team. Anyway, there was the young team, which was three sisters and a boyfriend. And they were actually more mature than the next team. The next team was Mary Ann, the birthday boy, and a sister and a niece. And the niece is hilarious. She's one of those types of people that when she gets going... She'll have the whole room in stitches and you can guarantee you'll pee your pants. Well, I do anyway. And I have to make sure I'm prepared <laughs> for an evening with her because she is just so funny. And she, she like thrives off of the laugh, you know, those types of people, that the more people laugh, the more she goes. And she just has, she should have been a stand-up comedian. She has so missed her calling. So I, I knew I didn't want to be on her team because there'd be so much mucking around going on that it'd be just a disaster if you actually wanted to experience the game without, I guess, peeing your pants. <laughs> so we let the crazy, we'll call them the crazy team. We let them go first and then the young ones. And then our team was last. And I said to our team, if we're going to have any chance of winning this, we're going to stay away from those crazy ones because there'll be that much laughing and goosing around. It'll be embarrassing because we're in public too. So I just knew it was going to be trouble. And uh, so off we all went on our, or we, we had to pick our golf clubs first. And there was uh, two sizes, small and large. So we're all squabbling over those and cacking ourselves laughing and just, oh, it was just chaos. So the first lot get going and you could hear them, the laughter the whole way around the course. When you sort of get to your little section of, a, it's like miniature golf basically, and you work out where your ball's got to go in the distance, you've got to get there as least shots as possible. So... Most of the shots from our team were either three, two, sometimes four, but we were concentrating and, you know, working hard at it. Well, you know, hard enough. So we were sort of going two, three, two, four. That was our average score, but we could hear the crazy team <laughs> in front of us and they were nearly two to three holes in front because they went off the tee first. They started first. And um, we could hear 10, <laughs> 8, <laughs> 9. It was so funny. And there was this one hole. It was so tricky. They had the, the hole where the ball had to go and then hanging directly above it was this huge painted piece of timber that was swinging. And it actually swung directly over the hole and 
uh, would hit the ball away if you timed it to the point where that big log come over the hole and the log was like that round. The hole's that round. So you sort of not only had to dodge this big swinging pendulum of timber, you, um, yeah, so I think I did that in five shots, but one of them did it in 12 shots. By then, people are backing up, waiting. We were waiting. The young team in front of us with all the sisters and the boyfriend, they were waiting. And this first team, the birthday boy and his wife, the niece and the sister. Oh, it was hilarious. We could just see people were backing up strangers and their teams and they were all just standing there thinking, these guys are idiots. <laughs> it was so funny. Oh, gee, we just pretended we didn't know them. But uh, luckily, the rest of us got through at a reasonable pace, you know, five shots and that, not ten that pin is disappearing fast under that chill. Let's get that little guy out before he's gone forever. And that little guy. So at the end of the day, we had a fantastic night. We had our little scorecard and lo and behold, I won. I think it was 48, um, yeah, 48 shots I took to get around it was probably maybe 50 because oh, there was a couple of times we forgot what we had done because we were laughing so much so I'm going to add two just for the sake of anyone accusing me in the group of cheating which I didn't but I may have forgotten what I actually did so I'm going to say 50 the next score was uh, 56 and then 58 and then it was horrific after that they were in the 70s, <laughs> the 90s, <laughs> because they were mucking around so much. So you could tell who concentrated. Competitive, am I? No. <laughs> yes. No, it was a lot of fun. I did play a little bit of golf when I was a kid, you know, when schools introduced sports to kids, and I did like it. I found it quite interesting that picking your angles and, you know, trying to get as close as you can but not too far. So it's quite a quite an interesting game. Would I play it now? Probably not. Don't think I could be bothered walking around the course. Putt-putts, that's all right. So that was our evening. So when we got back to um, Kevin Marianne's house, well, oh gosh, then... I've got to tell you about the car park incident. <laughs> when we all drove off, there were three cars. And um, Kevin and Mary Ann have a little blue car. Uh, Chelsea and her sisters, Chelsea has a little yellow car and we have a black car. So off we go. So blue, yellow, black. Up the freeway ramps we go. And the little blue car took off because he's a big kid and he hasn't grown up yet. And Kevy just took off. So we're in really heavy traffic because it was probably quarter past five. So there's a lot of people coming home from work. It just, it was heavy. <clears throat> so Kev, like a rocket, like usual, took off. Just in the little yellow car, she was trundling along and you could see the girls and the boyfriend in there. And one of the girls, they're all chatting, their arms swinging and there was giggling. So they were just pootering along. So we just sat behind them on the freeway. <clears throat> we're actually quite impressed at her driving because she's usually a little racer like a father. But they sat nicely and we just sat behind them and we lost sight of the little blue car. It was gone. So anyway, we're getting closer to the city, closer to the city. And we're all debating on how to get there. There's probably three ways to tackle it. So we're on the big bridge crossing the Brisbane River into the city and we all decided in the car that Turbot Street would be our exit. But Chelsea just wasn't making that move to the right to do it. And Gaz was like, come on, Chelsea, pull over, pull over. And we're behind her. <clears throat> she didn't. So we did up into Turbot Street. She kept going. So she went another way. And we found out later that her... 
her parents went that as way, way as well. So her mum had given her directions. So that made sense. So anyway, we're, we've taken an exit off. We've headed towards the section of town and then swing a left and up on a hill and around the corner and we're there. <clears throat> and the little blue car, who was way in front of us on the freeway, probably a kilometre by the time we got to the city, they had only just pulled up. So we made really good time and actually was quicker and caught them by the taking of that exit. And, of course, Chelsea girl, she kept going. Then they got lost, which doesn't surprise me because they were all chitty-chatting in the car and probably no one really paying attention. Excuse me. <clears throat> so we're getting out of the car. And we parked in this car park fairly close to this venue where the little blue car was down in a paddock, like an overflow for parking. No sign of Chelsea. And a few phone calls later, 20 minutes later, she comes trundling in. Now, yeah, they got lost. So then there was a debate over, you gave us the wrong instructions, and it was just hilarious. <clears throat> so we get in, get to the venue, and all is good. The end of the night, um, there was quite a queue for the toilet. So most of them had got through, and we were still all queuing to go in, and... We, I said to him, you guys go, we'll meet you back at the house. So they all took off and our car load, we were sort of last to go. So off we start heading towards the car. We got our bearings wrong. We couldn't find the car and it's pitch black. There's a terraced areas. It's like on a hill, this whole complex. It's huge. There's car parks everywhere. There's little golf courses everywhere. There's weddings everywhere. There's celebrations everywhere, people everywhere, and drunk people everywhere. Security guards stopping you going from one section to another section. And we are trundling through these trails, trying to find the pocket of parking that was ours. And um, the boys were going, it's over this way, it's over this way. And I'm like, no, it's, I'm sure it's this way. The city is behind us. We're, we're heading... We've got to head north, not if we go south, we're walking towards the city. We've come from there. No, 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 it's over here. I said, we didn't walk past the golf, the big driving range. We've got to go this way. So I'm heading in one direction. They're wanting to go in another direction. I hit a dead end because I hit a venue. So there's all these people dancing and, you know, drinks in their hands. And the, the word love was the size of four humans with lights in it and I, I'm like well I can't go through their function so I'm I'm telling the boys and um, the other couple and my husband it is this way it's this way and they're like well we didn't go through that building I'm like I oh, know but I think we're on the other side of it we've just come down too low so I'm up through a garden bed it was so funny walking up through a garden bed around a couple of trees under some pergola thing where they seem to have chairs and tables stored. It was not public access, I don't think. But anyway, with a bit of cross-country walking and them going, no, it's this way. And I'm going, no, <clears throat> it's just over this ridge. So anyway, I appeared out of the garden at the top of this ridge and I was looking straight down onto the big car park that we'd come in on. So it was literally a hill and we were on the wrong side of the hill. <clears throat> so we found the car, finally got into the car, finally got out of the city and home. And of course they were all waiting and they'd started playing cards. They're big cards players, all the kids and the parents. It's like their go-to game for... 10 people. Marianne comes from a big family. So by the time you have all the sisters and their partners and then the kids, it's cards is a good big game to play. So anyway, they're all there waiting. And we had our scorecard with us. They had their scorecard. So they were dying to see how we went. And we'd added them up in the car and I knew I was on 48 so as soon as we walked in the door, watch your scores, watch your scores. So we announced our scores and it turned out, yes, I was the winner. I suspected so because I could hear them. And anyone who's half decent at maths would know they were in trouble. 
as they're yelling out horrific numbers. <laughs> it's very funny. So I won a certificate and I won a big block of chocolate, like a big block. And you know when you're sitting in a group of people around a big table and they're all playing cards and Kevy's on the cappuccino machine making hot chocolates and, you know, everyone's laughing and in the middle of the table is a big block of chocolate. And I was sitting there, I was looking at my block of chocolate. Let's just say what it is. It's my block of chocolate. And I was like, well, the, the right thing to do is to open the chocolate, isn't it? Or do you, you sit on that chocolate and squirrel it away? for a rainy day at your home. <laughs> so I was sitting there and there was no snacks or anything like that coming out. And mind you, we we're all pretty full. We really did not need anything. But there was no nibblies or anything like that. So I, I thought, oh, do I, do I not, do I? <laughs> so I did. I opened it up, shared it around. And um, once the... Once the coffees were all made, out come those, those like twizzle sticks there. They're like wafers with chocolate in the centre. And I and everyone was into the cho my chocolate. And I said, look, save them, Kev. Don't, there's plenty here. This, this block's nearly a kilo of chocolate. But no, they came out too. So everyone's into the chocolate, into the coffees, into the hot chocolates. So anyway, it was probably about 10.30 and I was getting tired, really tired. So, well, you know, winners. I worked hard to make that, that win. <laughs> so my husband and I said, well, good night, guys, because we weren't playing cards. Good night. We're going to head off. And I grabbed me block of chocolate and I ran. <laughs> so I have a nice block of chocolate waiting for me, <laughs> minus a third <laughs> but there's plenty to share. Plenty. So uh, that was our evening. And of course, when I got home, it was probably half past 11. By then, the cappuccino caffeine kicked in. I'd had a uh, ginger beer earlier in the evening. So the sugar from the ginger beer kicked in. And then I'm like, well, I'm going to go to bed because I felt weary, but as soon as I laid down in the bed, oh, that was it. I could not sleep. I saw uh, 12.30, 1.30, and I must have finally dozed off, finally. But, um, oh, it was a struggle. And I think it was that cappuccino, the chocolate, the ginger beer. I nearly hopped up and come in here to do some stitching. And I thought, you crazy girl, just go to sleep. So, yeah, and we, we were told in the invite, make sure you bring plenty of warm clothes because not only are we eating in a semi-outdoor bistro -y type environment, we're playing golf out in the cool. So I had layers on thinking I'd freeze, but it was so humid. It was a beautiful night and so humid that... Um, we're peeling off all of our jackets. So everyone's carrying armfuls of clothes around the golf course. But it was such, such a beautiful night. It was really good. So that was my entertainment. So you're watching this video um, Monday. It'll be Monday for you guys. It's Sunday for me now. And that was Saturday night's entertainment. So, yeah. Don't have much planned today. Actually, I do. I've, um, I'm on the hunt for some vintage tapestries. Like my little cross stitch here. I'm looking for some nice tapestries to work into pieces in the future. And I think it's all come from that piece that I picked up that's floral and um, I really like the idea of creating a piece around some vintage pieces like that you know I um, love collaging 
So I'm sort of thinking along those lines for a project. Anyway, I've been trawling through Marketplace, Facebook and other places and I found this tapestry at like two in the morning and it's a series of birds and it's like probably only about 15, 20 centimetres wide but tall. I think it's about five birds. So I, I waited till 6 a.m. <laughs> and sent her a message uh, to see if it was still available. So I'm hoping it is. And today I'll go for a drive and grab it. So that'll be my Sunday, Sunday outing. Go for a spin. Actually, that was a Facebook beep, maybe. No, it wasn't. There was a second one on a um, Facebook site, but someone had said sold. But the ladies just said to me, I'll have to get back to you as another person had said she wanted it. I gave my details, etc., but I have no response at all. I'll message her again. And if I don't get a reply later this morning, I will let you know. Okay, that's well, I'm in with a chance. I'll just let her know I will purchase ASAP. Don't you hate it when you're trying trying to sell something and people just stuff you around? So I'm just saying to her, okay, um, let me know. I will purchase ASAP. All right. So I'm in with a chance. So that'll be fun. And they're not too big, so you're not trying to work in a massive big tapestry. So, yeah, it's just an idea I have for a future project. I've got a couple little bits and pieces that I did when I was younger and my grandmother was right into tapestry. So I sort of, I don't know, they're just sitting in the cupboard and I want to do something with them. So I'm thinking of... Um, creating a collage around them and just playing with them for no other reason but just to get them out of the cupboard and dust them off and use them. It's a bit of a thing from the 80s and 70s with all those tapestries. A few of them I've got of grandmas are just too big, like they're big scenes. I wish I had have had foresight. And I would have got a, a lot of florally type ones to do for me. On, on uh, thinking back on it, but a lot of them are Australian scenes, so they're sort of not. I don't know. They don't inspire me to go and collage fabrics and laces and beading, and so I'm on the lookout for floral and bird tapestries. Not too big. Even if they're little, doesn't matter. So I'm going to an antique market at the end of the month. So that's going to be my hunt. I don't need anything else. So I sort of thought, oh, well, that's if I find something great. If I don't, doesn't matter. Does not matter. I'm loving how this is stitching down. And I think what I'll do is really embellish this and I'll keep it in the pearls. Don't know. I, you know what? I don't know if I like this piece. Like it ties it into this. Like see that brown? It brings it over here. But I'm just not sold. It, it, it's I'm not going to stitch there. I just, I'm only going to stitch where I know I love it, I think. Otherwise, I'll only unpick it. I'll only pull it apart. So I've really stitched down he here. The other thing I need to do, which I mentioned in a, another video, is I need to couch down some of these long 
stitches. So I might actually stay in this and work my way up. I think that's what I'll do for my homework. So I'll work on that over the next week or so. We've got a prompt coming this week, so maybe that will fix some of these odd areas. I'm going to leave all that pinned because I'm not 100% sold. I love this. And I need to get this nice and secure. So I think that'll be my homework is to just keep tacking down this bit. So let's get needle and thread. just set myself up so that's pretty good that I know that's oh, probably does need a little bit more work here I just don't want anything to wriggle or move yeah that's better just a few little stitches I've left all this open here so that See my thumb going in through there? That will uh, allow me to tuck in there. Pieces if needed. Oh, Pepper and Bandit, they're just happy, happy today. You can hear them whooping. So I might need a bit of tension on this. To get that stitch straight so i might just get some pins in okay that's pretty good so now just going to come through and do some little oops, tiny little stitches to catch that. Oh, those doggies, they just get so excited. stitch down am I in the right spot yep okay lovely I might just follow those long lineal lines now and then once I get them down I'll feel confident that my piece will not be moving. They're, they're nearly too long. It would have been part of the pattern, but they're nearly too long for such a stitch. But I guess if you were to frame it, that would sit properly once it was, you know, pinned out by the framer. But we're not going to have that luxury, so... Needs just a little bit of maintenance. There's a few up here too that around that sewing machine. Tiny, tiny little stitches. How are we going for time? Oh, look at that. How does it go so quick, guys? I know slow stitch is meant to be slow, but sometimes you just feel like an hour whizzes by and you've barely got into it. 
might just scoot out into this dress. I could even embellish this dress a little with beads. That'd give her a little sparkle. Some little, little beads. There we go. That's securing that cross stitch forever. Well, not forever. It can always be cut off. But I doubt it. It'd be nice to use it. Like I said, it's just been in the cupboard. It's been interesting because actually, I think three of you have mentioned that you have actually done this exact pattern. They must have sold a lot of them back in the day. All right, I'm gonna en en enter, exit, finish. Okay, um, finish this little bit just here. Come on, lost the end. There we go. Lovely. All right, guys, I might leave it at that for you guys because I'm sure this is riveting. And I'll just sit here probably for another half an hour and just secure this down. Then I know it's done. And I might, I'm pretty happy with that out there. So I think I'm going to secure those treasures, my treasured pieces. But let them flop around a little bit because I think more will happen up there. I'll leave this pinned for now because I'm not convinced about it but something may come. All right, guys, look after yourselves. Have a lovely day and um, I'll see you in the next video. Bye. Hi, guys, I'm back. I was just sitting here for the last hour stitching and I've, uh, like I said, worked my way up through the piece. I've stitched down all of this through here which then sort of forced me to make some decisions up here on this flower, which I've now adjusted its axis so that it's sitting a little bit better. Then that made me pull this lace collar down because it was covered and I don't want to have it covered. I then pulled this piece of wedding lace down. So all of this was higher in that it's covered this brown lace and softened it. And I'm really happy with it now. Remember I said there was a bit of a chunk of brown happening there? I really like the lace. It's from my French travels, but I just felt like it was very bleh in there. So I'm just sort of repinning and I'm now undoing this lace that I put here earlier in the video to do with my mum's dress. I've got pins everywhere here. So I thought I'll just turn on the video because I've actually think I've solved the issue that was bugging me. So I want to see that drop point on that collar, that, that lineal line there, not lineal. Yeah, well, it is lineal, I guess. Then this can now nestle in to there. Once again, pushing that brown lace back. So we're getting layers of it popping through, but more subtle. So I'm happier with that. So yeah, I, it, it sort of started evolving by just adjusting those couple little pieces. I feel like I've... I'm going to just leave that the way it was because something could go there as well. I haven't yet found a home for that random piece there, but that's okay. I've sort of just got a few things pinned. I, I would say that collar will get cut, but I'm not game to yet because it might end up carrying on, which would be lovely because then it's found its home forever without actually being separated, which would be quite a bonus I would think so now that flower 
is looking better. It's amazing how you just adjust one thing, which then makes you see something else. And I definitely didn't want to hide all of that beautiful lace for this little collar. And um, yeah, I feel like the piece now has settled a little bit. I don't know if that makes sense. Probably looks like a mishmash to you guys, but I do feel like I see something happening. Even if this never got a piece in here, I love the fact that I can see the stitching that was there before me. Yeah, so I, I'm going to now work my way up through here. I'll put a few more little stitches in on this little guy to secure him, but he needs then a pink thread actually securing the edges. That'll be another day, but I can at least get this piece through here done. Love how that's come up there. This up here. So, okay. So, yeah, I just thought I'd come back quickly and just show you that I had made a few more little adjustments. Yeah, much happier with that. Really, really happy. All right, guys. Once again, I shall say goodbye and see you all in the next video. Bye.